Why is it so hard to write? One hour later. Nothing is done. Don't you wish that ideas will pop up whenever you start writing an article instead of staring at a blank screen almost 90% of the time? What if I told you that it'll be so much easier to write when you figure out what type of content you're writing and the structure of it? So in this video, we're going to share with you a template structure for each of the content types. So all you need to do is to plug the right information and place it in the right position. It eliminates writer's block and you can create more content in record time. Let's get right into it. Hey, it's Jack from RankMath, the WordPress SEO plugin that constantly strives to provide you with the fastest and the most cutting-edge SEO tool. And on this channel, we provide you with the most up-to-date SEO knowledge and information. So if you're new to our channel, consider subscribing. Now, though there are millions of blog posts on the web, they are categorized into about 20 different types. But we will only be talking about the most popular ones, like the query post, how-to guide, review, comparisons, listicle, and roundups. We believe this should cover more than 90% of your blog posts. And if you think there are more popular types of blog posts you want us to cover, do let us know in the comments. And before we get started, do know that the template structures we provide should act as a guide and not a set of rules. So feel free to add whatever information you think is useful to your readers. Now, let's dive into the structure of the query posts. Query posts are posts that answer a specific question. For example, how long can a horse run before it gets tired? How fast can a sloth move when in danger? How many hours of sleep is good for health? Is there a difference between barbecuing and grilling? What is the ideal fishing weather? A typical query post is about 800 to 1300 words and the way to write such a post is like somebody coming up to you and asking a question. For example, you are a tour guide and someone in the group asks how much should you tip in the country? What will be your response? For me, I will first give them a ballpark figure and depending on the culture, I would say if it is customary or if it is discretionary. Now, putting this part of the conversation into a blog post, I will put it under the introduction. Why? Think about it. Why don't you need an introduction when you are a tour guide? That's because your tour group knows that you are a tour guide and they expect good information from you. So there is no need for an introduction. But when it comes to an article online, nobody knows who you are. So you gotta introduce yourself and let people know why they should trust your words. The introduction shouldn't be longer than four sentences and it's best to keep it three sentences and below. If you want to know how to write a well-crafted and attractive introduction, we have a separate video right here that talks about it. You can check it out in the description as well. Next, your initial response should be short and sweet and should not beat around the bush. Google tends to pick up the most concise and accurate answer and place it as the featured snippet. So it just makes sense to spend some time to optimize the part of the article. And as I've said, you should write as though you are answering a question verbally in a conversation. And it should be between 40 to 60 words. Following that, you want to write a sentence or two to let your readers know, hold up, there's more to this initial response and I'm going to break it down for you. This is where you will add your subheadings or sub-subheadings. Notice that the title of your article is a H1 heading tag and your subheadings that answer the title of your article should be in H2 heading. In this case, it could be a breakdown like tipping service staff, tipping for transport, tipping in hotel, and depending on the topic, you could break them down further. And in this case, you can either place them as a H3 heading or just bold words, like tipping at a restaurant, tipping bartender, tipping at a spa, tipping tour guides, tipping taxi drivers, tipping airport shuttle driver, tipping front desk crew, tipping concierge, tipping room service staffs. You see, all these subheadings are still relevant to the main topic. And from here, you can write a couple of paragraphs for each of the subheadings. When you break things down this way, writing your content becomes much easier because you are answering one subtopic at a time instead of answering the question as a whole. Now, depending on the query, you may want to add an FAQ section with an FAQ schema because it allows your content to have more visibility on search results and it's much easier for your readers to consume the content. If you have trouble coming up with FAQs to answer, you can do a search on Google and visit the People Also Ask section. Expand a couple of questions and you will see more FAQ suggestions. Or how about you use our AI system called Content AI? As it will analyze the contents that are ranking and give smart suggestions, 
That tells you the best FAQs to include in the article. Just copy the set of questions by clicking this and paste it on your WordPress editor. And this entire section will be schema ready. In all the remaining content types we'll be talking about later, we will always recommend having an FAQ section whenever possible. So do not be surprised that we kept saying it over and over again. Does all this make sense to you? Is this how you write your query post as well? If you are getting value from this, don't forget. Anyway, depending on the query, if it is straightforward, you can use the method we have shared. But a query post can easily spawn into a how-to post or a how-to guide. For example, how to create an app, how to start a business, how to jump higher. Notice that most of these how-to reach snippets are in list form. And the listed items are basically steps that will help you achieve a desired outcome. And if possible, you want to have more than 8 steps so that you will see this more items link. That will lead people to want to know more by clicking through. So the way to structure a how-to style content is different from a query post. And honestly, there are many different types of how-tos. It can be how to bake a cake, how to delete a message from WhatsApp, how to fold an origami. So depending on the how-tos is about, you want to start with an introduction and maybe include an image or a description of the final product because you want people to know that they are in the right place. And then, depending on the topic at hand, if it is a very complicated process that needs some consideration, you may want to add advantages and disadvantages of going through the steps. If the process requires supplies, tools, and materials, you want to list them down so that your readers are well prepared before working on the steps. And then comes the actual steps to achieve the final outcome. In each step, you want to give a title, which should be H2 heading tags. This title is not a full description, but a few words to describe what you are going to do. For example, if one of the steps to bake a cake is to add 200 grams of butter and stir until creamy, you name the step as mix in the butter and you'll give the details in the description. Think of it this way, you are the master and your reader is the apprentice. You are standing beside the apprentice giving the steps. The master will give the step, usually it is vague because the master expects the apprentice to know, but the apprentice knows nothing. So he or she will question for more accurate instructions and details and that's where the master will explain further. If possible, you should also include an image of each step so that your reader can verify if they have done it right. But make sure that the image is relevant to the step, otherwise it defeats the purpose of adding an image. You may probably snap some shots of important steps and better yet, record the entire process and make it into a video. Don't need to show your face, just turn your camera anger downwards towards your hands. Now, if you are a rank map user, do you know you have the option to add a how-to schema to your blog post? We have made the how-to post structure for you already. On your blog editor, add a blog, you can search for how-to, and you will see the how-to blog by rank map. Click on it to add to your article, add your final image, which is the final product we have talked about, add your main description, which is the introduction and the prerequisites. You can choose to add the duration of the entire process, now note that the contents you place in each of these fields are added to the how-to schema markup. If you have the pro version of RankMath, it will give you more options to add, like the estimated cost, supply, tools, and material. These are all the prerequisites. And then the details of the steps. You can add as many steps as you want. If you want more details on how to use our how-to schema blog, you can check out this video right here. The link is in the description. Anyway, again, depending on the search term, you may want to add an FAQ section as well. Now, there are many different types of listicle posts. How-tos could be a listicle as well, but we have talked about them. And other listicle style posts are, for example, tips to grow YouTube channel, best places to do wedding photo shoot, Ways to improve productivity, habits of a successful student, best graphic design software, and many others. Similar to the how-tos, your goal is to get the same type of reach snippets, so it will be ideal to have at least 8 items in your listicle post. Now depending on the depth of the query, the structure of your listicles may differ. Let's talk about the easier ones first. Topics like reasons why homework should be banned, reasons why Android is better than iPhone or vice versa, ways to improve productivity, all are information-heavy contents, but the search intent is clear. 
the searcher wants a list of information. So you start with an introduction, followed by a table of contents, depending on how long your article is. And then a list of information to satisfy the search intent. For each item, you want to use the H2 heading tags. It will be helpful to add running numbers to the items to tell search engines this is a list, and it also helps with the user experience. In each of the descriptions, you should have approximately two to three paragraphs going in detail that explains each item. If you have something more to help justify the topic, like for example, the reasons why homework should be banned, you could include the pros and cons of banning homework. The additional information should come after the list. And finally, the FAQ section. Remember, always satisfy the search intent at the top. Now, some types of listicle posts require more imagery than text. For example, best places for wedding photo shoot, what color cultures goes with gray walls, restaurants with volcano view in Tagete, hotels with sea view in Great Ocean Road. In such listicle articles, if it is all text, the searcher will just click away because you are not satisfying their search intent. They want to see images as though they are there because they are doing some research and planning their trip. And definitely there is a secondary search intent. For example, best places for wedding photo shoot. Maybe they haven't found a photographer yet. Maybe they haven't planned their budget yet. You could include all those information in the article as well. So the structure for such a post will be something like the intro, the list with H2 heading tags, and in the description of each item, you want to include an image and some text to describe the item. And any other information will be after the list of H2 headings, like the FAQ section if applicable. You don't necessarily need to have a table of contents for such a case because your site visitors will most likely scroll through the entire article to view all images. But feel free to add it at your discretion. For topics like best tools for project management, best lawnmower, best graphic designing softwares, Whenever there are products involved in a listicle post, the person searching for it may have a buying intention. So how do we tackle such cases? Let's take for example, the best graphic designing softwares. We'll start with an introduction as always, and a table of contents for easy navigation. And after that, we want to display a table of products with some specs so that we immediately fulfill the two search intents. The list of graphic designing softwares to fulfill the curiosity and the specs that will help justify the buying decisions. And then you go into the details of each graphic designing software. In the headings of each software, we could include running numbers so it tells Google that this is a list. And it is also good for user experience. You could talk about some common characteristics, why you have selected the software, who is it for, the pros and cons, a link to an in-depth review of the product, which we'll cover later on, or whatever information you think will help your readers to differentiate between the products. And at the end of the list, if there is any further information that could help your readers, like a buying guide, defining some technical terms, why you need the product, different types of graphic designing softwares, any research data you have found to justify your verdict on which is the best software, the FAQ section. You can also include links to the in-depth comparison posts. Again, we'll cover this as well. All this information should be placed below the list items. You could structure your content in such a way that the H2 headings are the important points of the article and the list itself are H3 heading tags. Now, this type of content is sensitive. You really need to think if it is worth writing the product review, especially for physical products, since places like Amazon, Walmart, and most e-commerce sites have great information and customer reviews. So proceed with caution and do your research first. The key is to have something unique to share. However, if it is a course, software, or a product that is sold only by the creator itself, where there is not much information on the internet, it is great to write a product review on it. So to write a great review post, there is no secret. Just use the product for an extended time. That way you'll be able to give a genuine and authentic product review that is unique to your point of view. If you don't have the money to buy the product, rent it. And if the product is too expensive, start with the cheaper ones in the same category. And when you start making money from your blog, then consider buying or renting the more expensive product. Anyway, the best structure for a review post will be an introduction that includes the frustrations, pain points, and challenges people usually face before discovering the product. Add a table of contents, write a little bit about yourself and why people should trust you, your judgment, and this review. 
try to include evidence that you own the product in this section. The title of this section can be about the author and this review. You want to follow up with the most important thing of the review, which is your unique experience and opinion on the product. It would be best if you have experiences with other similar products. You share your opinion on this product as well as other similar products and let people know why they should or should not use this product. Thereafter, give an overview of the review. I'm pretty sure you have seen something like this. You want to give your readers a summary of your review, a snippet of the pros and cons. If possible, you want to add internal links to other articles like alternatives to this product or a product comparison between A and B. Most of the time, people want to know their options before making a purchase. So you want to give them that information. Then you want to have a section that explains who this product is for. Is this product meant for the average Jane or Joe? Or if it is more for corporates and businesses? If the product is a little technical, you want to have a section that walks people through how to set up the product. And if it requires a separate how-to tutorial article, you want to place a link in this section. Next, you want to find a way to grade the product like the usability, the features, support channels, the pricing, and whatever else you feel helps the reader with their purchase decision. Then, you want to include a section for the pros and cons. It could be a H2 heading tag with the pros and cons tags, or you could separate them out into two H2 tags with what I like and what I don't like. And then, if you think it is appropriate, you want to have a section to give a background of the product and the company behind it. The reason why this section is so far down is because people searching for a product review probably already know what the product is and who are the makers. They are just looking for more information to help them decide if they should buy the product. If they still can't make up their mind, you want to have a section that says, alternative to the product. And in this section, you want to place a table that compares the top two similar products to the one you are reviewing. You can place internal links to any comparison posts as well as the listicle posts if any. Take the same example as mentioned earlier. If you are reviewing a particular graphic designing software, you can link it to the best graphic designing software's post. Similar to the other types of blog posts, you want to place the more important information at the top and leave those that are not so important but good to have information at the bottom. Finally, you want to give a verdict on if it is worth buying the product or not followed by the FAQ section, if any. Again, there is no hard and fast rule on the structure of the review post, but what we have shared is the foundation of a good review post. And of course, a good review post is not complete without the right schema markup to get a star rating on search results. So to add the right schema, on your post, click on Rank Maps tab at the top right, select the schema option and schema generator, Depending on what you're reviewing, the review rating schema options are available in the book, course, event, movie, product, recipe, and the software schema. Just select the right option by clicking on use, fill up all the appropriate information without forcing it, and there, you will see the review rating as well as the pros and cons schema markup. If you want to know more about the review rating and the pros and cons schema, we have separate videos for them. You can check out the links in the description. Comparison posts are articles that compare two or more similar products. For example, Rank Math vs. Yoast or Rank Math vs. Yoast vs. All-in-One SEO. The key to writing a great comparison post is if you have used all the products in comparison for an extended period of time and you have unique research data and information to back up your claim on which is the better option. The purpose of a comparison post is to help your readers decide if product A is better than product B and in what circumstances should people choose B instead of A. So your comparison post should be structured in a way to help differentiate one product from another. You will start with an introduction that should not be longer than 200 words and similar to the query post, you want to have a straightforward answer to the question, product A versus product B, which is better? Answer it as though somebody asked you this question and you want to give a top level answer that summarizes all your thoughts into 60 words or below. Then if possible, you want to add a comparison table that summarizes all the attributes in comparison, such as the features, prices, the unique research data collected, etc. Following that, you want to add what is product A, what is product B, how are they different, how are they similar, compare similar features, pros and cons for product A, pros and cons for product B, verdict and detailed summary, and the FAQ section if appropriate. 
The best roundup posts are those that target highly interesting topics that experts in the niche or industry will be interested to answer. For example, if you are in the SEO niche, you want to target topics like SEO trends next year, SEO tools used by experts, SEO strategies experts use, 30 SEO experts share their number one tip for blog monetization, how SEO experts recover from a Google update, which by the way, we have covered the complete strategy right here. Link in the description. Anyway, notice that all these topics are what beginners are looking for, and since they are answered by multiple experts, the tendency of clicking through and sharing the information is much higher. So assuming you have collected the views and opinions of many experts on a particular topic, here's how you should structure your roundup post. It's actually very simple. You will start with an introduction, and then depending on what the answers are, you may be able to sort them based on the similarities. You can do a write-up about the similarity trait and list those answers by the experts. You will do the same for the other traits. However, if you can't identify any similar traits, then you will add the expert answers into the post. Do know that you want to sort the experts by popularity first. The reason for doing so is that your readers will resonate with experts who they know. If your reader identifies an expert they know, your article becomes more credible to them. In addition to that, you won't offend the top experts because there is a silent expectation that top experts want to be ranked first. Finally, you want to summarize all the pointers and probably come up with an overall strategy that beginners can take away. We hope that all these blog post structures make sense to you and who knows, following these structures may get you good results. If you want to learn more about how to make your content SEO friendly that increases the chance of success, feel free to check out the video right here to optimize your blog post. We have left the link in the description. If you find this video helpful, do support us by smashing the thumbs up button. We are constantly on the lookout for great SEO insights and we'll provide those knowledge and information on this channel. So you may want to consider subscribing to us. I'm Jack, by the way, and you're on the Rank Math channel. We'll see you on the next video.